uh, of religious leaders across the state, some in Central Ohio, from all over. And Rich Nathan uh, here at the Vineyard, which is a really a remarkable place. Uh, for those that are out there, if you're looking for a place to go when you've got a problem, Vineyard's a pretty darn good place. Sorry, Kevin. It's, it's a very good place. <laughs> so, so Rich here, he's, uh, he, he organized this, and we have a lot of folks here. What we're trying to deal with is the need for these, uh, these religious institutions, these churches, synagogues, mosques, begin to tell their parishioners about, uh, you know, in very direct terms about the dangers of drugs, we give them the tools of which to communicate it, uh, to involve more members of their community in this, because as we do our work at the state level, we need a very strong partnership at the local level. And there are many places in Ohio where these partnerships are, are blossoming, but I'm one who happens to believe that the faith community who's concerned about deeply concerned about people, all the people's lives, their hope, their purpose in life, it can be a, a fulcrum, a pivot for which all other organizations can, can work. And um, they've agreed today that uh, at least once a month they will have something in their sermon about the problem of drugs because we know that when people hear about this problem, there's a 50% chance uh, that they will never do drugs. Secondly, that they're going to be in a position to be able to talk to us about ways in which we can help them, as I just delivered to a pastor here, some Narcon, she didn't know it was available, we can get it to her, it can be helpful to her on the west side, um, that we, we think that there are ways in which we can all work together and talk about the need to adopt at least just one school, not a whole school district, but one <coughs> school, where they can work with the educational leaders to make sure that, that children, that young students, that those approaching graduation can hear about these dangers. And finally, that they would move to bring one other religious institution in with them so we can begin to grow this circle. Uh, this is simple uh, to a very complicated problem, but as we work and take our first steps, uh, we're of the view that we can become more complicated, more comprehensive, more effective, not just in the area of drugs, but perhaps a lot of the, the socio-economic environment that put people in a position at times where they resort to this to escape hopelessness and loneliness and joblessness, all these things that can contribute. But at the same time, we also recognize that there are an awful lot of people who don't have these socio-economic problems that somehow find themselves into addiction. And so it'll be an effort, uh, depending on what the church is and how they approach it, but we want this partnership, and um, it's going to be a good one, and I'm very excited about it. So let me just have Rich Nathan say a few things, and then if you have a couple questions, we'll take them. Well, first I just want to uh, thank uh, Governor Kasich for his leadership and uh, in particular in working with the faith community because we hear so much, you know, it, it is possible to have a political environment in which, uh, you know, folks are so concerned about uh, guarding government from any faith leaders that we don't really work together in partnership and we don't uh, get the very, uh, you know, the people who are making a difference around the table helping to make a difference. So Governor Kasich has been leading out in that uh, regard in forming partnerships with those who are really doing the work. And so we thank you, Governor, for your work. I appreciate it. Um, you know, there's so much bad news around the opiate crisis. And uh, we know that Ohio is ground zero in the United States. We saw more opiate deaths in 2015 than any place in America. We know that the, when the stats come in in 2016, it's going to be even worse than the year before. We hear bad news all the time. What we experience today, I think, is a little bit of good news. And the good news is that there are lots of uh, faith communities that are on the front lines doing something. And what we hope to do is pull some of the great ideas together, some of the great practices together, share with one another and really assist in creating hope. We know that if there's hope, people feel empowered. If the only thing we keep hearing is bad news, 
folks give up because we just say, you know what, uh, we really can't, we can't do anything. The problem is too big. But, but I think the uh, meeting today was an empowering meeting. I thought we heard some wonderful things uh, from small communities, from uh, the Muslim community, from the Jewish community, from some Christian communities, from what uh, is happening in the state. And so uh, we can start generating hope that'll empower us to, to move forward and, and deal with this crisis. So I'm grateful uh, that we were able to do this. And I think this is just a start. We don't want to just have a rally and say, well, gosh, we've done something. This is the beginning of many steps that we need to make together. So thank you very much.